Scott, thanks very much. Fed Governor Lael Brainerd saying continued gradual increases in Fed funds rates are likely to be appropriate in a speech in Detroit. She also says, though, that the Fed could hike rates above the neutral rate. And the reason is she points out two things, high asset valuations and fiscal policy asking as a tailwind for the economy may push up short term neutral rates and may force the Fed to go above its gauge of neutral, which she says is between two and a half and maybe three and a half percent. The yield curve, she says, as a result, may flatten or invert, but she's not worried about that necessarily because she says the yield curve or the flatter yield curve would not be sending the same recessionary signal as it has in the past. She says that's because of uh, lower rates and because of the term premium as well. She goes on to say, if we could just uh, go ahead here, uh, she goes on to say that the Fed would not hesitate to act more decisively uh, if inflation should get, come in higher. On the economy, Brainerd says growth is strong. The Fed is meeting its inflation and employment goals, but points out a bunch of notable risks here. Let me give them to you. She says financial vulnerabilities are building. She says the risks are notable in the corporate sector. She points out low spreads on corporate bonds and leverage lending again, she says, is again on the rise. Foreign developments, however, do present downside risk. She points out emerging markets there and trade overall presents an uncertainty. On unemployment, she says it may hit rates not seen since the 60s at the current rate of decline, and that causes her concern about accelerating inflation and financial imbalances, Scott. Steve, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think she's the first to, to talk about uh, going above neutral, right? She's not the first. Uh, last week with Eric Rosengren, uh, the Boston Fed president, he talked about it, as well as others have talked about this potential need for the Fed to do that, to potentially go at least somewhat above to slow the economy, particularly because of this tailwind from fiscal policy. So, so I mean, you could take it as it's, is it is it becoming more of the consensus now uh, that that may be the best path forward on policy? Yeah, I, the, the, the main question is going to be how Powell, uh, the Fed chairman, deal, uh, thinks about this. Which of course. We're not 100 percent sure about this. I think he sees the possibility right now. I believe he has most recently said that going to neutral would be the Fed's goal. But going somewhat above it is not out of the question. I'm not sure it's consensus yet, Scott, but it's something I think that investors have to put on their uh, uh, list of risks right now. Yeah. Steve, thank you. Pleasure. All right, Steve Leisman. Jimmy, uh, continued gradual hikes to stay the course Fed. Yeah, look, I, I, no surprises from this Fed. I, I do feel one of my uh, confidence was just saying, listen, if you're not in the right stocks, you kind of have a roaming bear market. And perhaps uh, those comments aren't enough to be able to move the banks, particularly with your comments about lending. But typically we would say, all right, well, listen, rates are going higher. Maybe we make some money with these stocks, but JP Morgan's down. JP Morgan. There's this uh, other headline here that the flatter yield curve uh, may not be a recession signal. I agree uh, said that. it could flatten even further, uh, if not invert. Um, you know, all of those you ask yourself conversations why? about you this 210 spread, it gets people nervous. You start thinking that it's a, a pointer towards a, an eventual recession, and maybe, uh, according to others, it's not. Right. Well, the, the, well the, the central banks are looking at a shorter term series. They're looking at the six month, not the two year at the short end, for example. But then you ask, why is it? Why is it flattening? You have structural demand coming from all over the world. Insurance companies, pensions, endowment funds, sovereign uh, uh, governments. You've got um, reserve banks all over the world that, that need 10 year U.S. Uh, bonds in their portfolios and continue to need it um, because of flows. So that's where you have the source of the flattening. It's not an economic signal. And the fact that the two year is up um, is because it's up deliberately. We are raising rates. We've got Wait. wage growth. Yeah, but look, I, sorry, I just see... Small business. Do you see the small business syndicate? No. I mean, don't you think that's incredibly popular? That's the F-150, yes. but that's also Cintas, and mm -hmm. that's, that, that's Granger, which is incredibly... That, by the way, that's square, because you need that in order to be able to have a, a point of sale. I mean, that's, this stuff is not recessionary. Now, or nor is the ISM number. Right. The ISM Wait, number's fantastic. It was at, at our Delivering Alpha, Jim, when you on stage with Cudlow, suggesting that the, all of this fuss and fodder over the 210 spread right. pointing towards a recession is a fallacy. I wish we had film of that, because Larry was spot on. You know, Larry, I mean, this is my partner for many years. And yep. I, I, he is not uh, uh, someone who said that idly. I mean, he thinks very long and hard about what he's going to say. It was a very good presentation. I remember uh, people telling me, I cannot believe you let him off the hook. And I said, 
but let him off the hook. What, what did he say? <laughs> that, what, what was the hook that I let him off of? I mean, you know, honestly, I mean, he came out with a very strong presentation about why small business is doing well, why the economy is doing well. And the fact that I didn't say that he, that's completely false, how can I do that? Oh, we well, can't that, do it yet. But you know, yeah, Union Pacific is not the end today. I, I like to talk on the side she likes. It's true. He, <laughs> and, and, and Larry... Look, I don't, I'm not politically on the same uh, spe side of the spectrum as Larry, but he's right in that you've got massive consumer confidence, small business confidence. And think about just the demographic makeup of small business owners in America. While we had a rallying bull market in stocks during Obama, they were not enthusiastic about the business atmosphere. And that changed on a dime. And you could say, well, it's partisan. All right, but so what? It's also the reality. People started to spend. Businesses started to invest. You can blame them for not having started earlier because they didn't like Obama, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, that's literally what happened on a lot of metrics. So you don't have to agree with Trump to say that something did change right. in the animal spirits and in the psyche of a lot of old white people. If you own reality. one store, you it's might okay. own another. I mean, look, we right. decided to build a second restaurant. Why? We said people, people feeling good. People feel good. Cool. People going out. It happened. That's, you think we're alone? We're like one of like 10 million people who feel that way. Look at Square's numbers. 50,000 people taking their little loans. That was a $37 billion company. What is a $37 billion company? I can't wait to check out the new spot. What happened to Marcus? It's, it's going to look good. It's called Longshoreman. I'm not supposed to mention that, but my, <laughs> wife's never, my wife doesn't know about this show or my show or your show <laughs> or any show. All right, let's get a check on energy uh, as we roll on. Uh, it is surging, as you might expect, as Hurricane Florence approaches Dom.